Hi everyone, I have with me here problem 3.55 from Yang and Friedman's University Physics textbook. So let's get started. A baseball thrown at an angle of 60 degrees above the horizontal strikes a building 18 meters away and at a point eight meters above the point from which it is thrown. Ignore the air resistance. A, find the magnitude of the ball's initial velocity, the velocity with which the ball is thrown. B, find the magnitude and direction of the velocity of the ball just before it strikes the building. So let's get started on a diagram. And the way I've drawn this out is, let's say we have a baseball like this, and it says that it's going to be thrown at an angle of 60 degrees above the horizontal. So if this is the horizontal, then we want 60 degrees above it. So that's gonna be 60 degrees. And we know that the building is 18 meters away. So starting from here, we can say that this is 18 meters. And then we have some sort of building, right? We don't know exactly how tall it is, but we know that for the sake of the question, it's going to be at a point eight meters above which the ball was thrown. So this distance over here is eight meters. And we can just sort of label our axes as positive x and positive y so that it's easier when, when we write down all of our unknowns. And in this question, we're pretty much just looking for the initial velocity and the final velocity. So, as usual, when we have some sort of projectile motion question, we can actually split it into two parts. So we can have an X component of knowns and then a Y component of knowns. And then when we solve those separately, we can use them to, or yeah, we can solve those separately to get the information that we want, or we can solve them. Um, we can solve one part and use that information in the other part. And I'll, I'll let you know what that means in just a minute. So when we write down our x and y knowns and unknowns, then we can figure out what we're solving for and what we already have. So if we have our x, or actually, let me just write down explicitly what we're doing. So we're going to split into two parts. Okay, so we have our x component. And in the x component, we don't know what our vi is or actually let me let me write it out let me write it out better okay so we know that we want our vix and we don't know what that is but we know that it's going to be some vi and cos 60 right because this is going to be our x component of the initial speed and then we don't know the time right and there's no acceleration so in the x in the x direction so we know that this is really just going to be v t and d right and then we have dx and we said that that's going to be 18 meters as per the question and then let's do the y we know that v i y is equal to v i sine 60 and then we know that d y is equal to eight meters we know that there is acceleration in this component it's negative 9.8 meters per, uh, sorry, meters per second squared. And we don't know the T, but we know that obviously, because this is one sort of motion or sorry, yeah, because we know that this is one sort of projectile motion, it's going to go obviously, oh, actually I should draw that a little bit better and then I'll erase it. So to reach this top, um, it's, pretty much going to be one T, right? Because if we're throwing something, it's the X component and the Y component, they're just components of one sort of projectile. So it's going to be one time for both X and Y. And earlier on, I said we can actually use one component to solve for the other component. So yeah, if we have, for example, time and all the other information in Y, then we can use time, the same time in X to solve for VI, right? But not in this question. In this question, we don't know what VI is and we don't know what T is. So we're going to, if we want to find out VI, we're going to have to solve for T as well. And 
in this question to do that, we're going to have to come up with a system of equations and use two equations, two unknowns to solve what we want. So if we have two equations, two equations, sorry, I'm just going to label that a little bit better, two equations and two unknowns, we want to solve. Okay. So in the y component, right, we have, we can use our, one of our kinematic equations, right? So one of the five kinematic equations because we have acceleration. So we have D is equal to V naught T plus half of A T squared. So we're gonna plug in all the values that we know. So we know that it's going to be eight meters high, right in the positive Y direction, because it's going up. And then we have V I Y or V I sine 60 times t plus half of negative 9.8 because acceleration is in the negative y direction, t squared. And then for x, we can just use distance is equal to speed times time because there's no acceleration component here. So it's just a simple speed equation. And then we have, we can plug in our values that we know. So we know that our dx is going to be 18 is equal to vi cos 60 times time. And there we go. So if we actually look right over here, we, oh, sorry about that. I'm gonna highlight that instead. Oh, okay, uh, a thicker highlighter. There we go. So we have, we have two equations, two unknowns, and now we can solve that. So if you actually, you can do two things. You can plug this into an online calculator, but I'm also just going to show you how we would solve it just to be thorough. So if we want to solve this, what we can do is we can use isolation, right? So we can use, there's, we know that there's two ways to sort of go about solving a system of equations. There's elimination and there's substitution. So let's use substitution. And I'm just going to do it in blue and right over so we can follow along the question a little bit better. Okay, so we have t is equal to, we're going to isolate for t in this equation. So in one, no, isolate for t. So t is equal to 18 over vi cos 60. And then we can just plug this t into two, right? So plug t into two. And then what we can do is eight, let me write that down. So eight is equal to VI sine 60 times T, which is 18 over VI cos 60 plus half of negative 9.8 and then t squared. So oh, let me just get down so that it fits. So I'm just going to rewrite this as negative 9.8 over 2 times t squared. So 18 over vi cos 60 squared. And when I simplify this, we can get eight is equal to VI cancels out. We can just, we have 18 sine over cosine tan 60 minus 4.9. And we have 18 divided by cos 60 squared is equal to, oh, let me just double check that divided by cos. 16 squared is 12.96, one over VI squared. Okay, so now we just need to solve for VI, right? So if we plug this into our calculator, um, you can just use simple algebra to isolate for VI. What I get is VI is equal to 16.5528 meters per second. And then what we can do is solve for T, right? So we have our VI right now, which is right over here. And we can just plug this back 
plug vi into t into one solve for t. And when I do that, I get t is equal to 2.174 seconds. Okay. So we know that our initial magnitude is going to be 16 meters, 16.55 meters per second. So I'm just going to highlight that. And there we go. And now what we want to do is we want to solve for part B. So we have our VI, which is for part A. Um, VI is equal to VI. I'm just going to write this in this top corner because I'm going to have to erase in a second. And I don't want to lose all uh, lose this information that we have down here. So VI is equal to 16.5528 meters per second. And I'm so sorry if you can hear anything in the background. I think my neighbors are doing fireworks right now, even though it's 6 p.m. So I'm just going to erase all of this. And then we can start solving for part B. So in part B, we want to know what essentially the final velocity is, right? Because if we're finding the velocity, the magnitude and direction of the velocity of the ball before it strikes the building, that's going to be right when it strikes the building, which is um, at, uh, which is going to be the final velocity. Okay. Okay, so for part B, I want to find VF, right? VF is equal to what? And also, sorry, I forgot to write this T over here. So it's T is equal to 2.174 seconds. Okay, so for VF, how we're going to solve this is that there's going to be two components, right? So there's going to be an X VF. We want to find out what VFX is. And we want to find out what VF Y is, right? And the reason why this is, um, there's two different components is because we know that in the X direction, right, VIX is going to be equal to VIY. It's equal to VI cos 60 is equal to 16.5528 cos 60. And the reason is because we know that there's no acceleration in the x direction. Whatever the x speed is at one point is what the x speed is at another point. So that's just going to stay consistent in the initial speed and in the final speed, right? So we have that right over here. And I, when I plug this in, I'm getting, I'm just going to double check my work, but 16.5528 times cos 60, it's going to be 8.2764 meters per second. And now we want to solve for, oh, sorry. VFX, not VIY, VFX. I wrote that completely wrong, right? VIY does change because we have acceleration, right? Due to gravity. And that means that because there's acceleration due to gravity, the speed at one point in the Y direction is not going to be necessarily equal to another point. And now we want to solve for VFY. And for VFY, we're going to just use all of our knowns that we have beforehand and one of the uh, five kinematic equations to find out what vfy is so the one that i used is vfy is equal to viy plus at this is one of the kinematic equations because we have our acceleration we have our time that we solve for right over here um, in part a and we have our viy sorry about that 
So let me plug those values in. So VIY, it's going to be 16.5528 sine 60 minus 9.8 times T, 2.174. And let's do that when we plug that in. 16.5528 sine 60 minus 9.8 times 2.174. I'm getting minus 6.9. Seven. And remember that we can have, and it makes sense that we have a negative speed in this at this point, because as you can see in this rough diagram I drew, when initially we have a positive y speed or velocity, but then when we're going downwards, y, the speed in the velocity is going to be negative in the y direction, right? Okay. So now that we have our vfx and our vfy, we can solve for the final speed. So we're going to do Pythagorean theorem and use some trig. So vf, right, so without the components, we are going to use um, Pythagorean theorem. So we get vfx is going to be vi of vfx squared plus vfy squared. So vf is equal to point two seven six four squared plus six point nine seven squared and I'm getting ten point eight meters per second. That's our V F. And we also want to know what the direction is because with when we only have the speed, it's just speed, but if we want magnitude and direction, then that's velocity. And so how we're gonna do that is we're gonna draw out a uh, little diagram. So this is our starting point. This is going to be 8.2764 and then down negative 6.6.97. 6 and that's how we got our 10.8 is by solving for this. But then if we want to find the direction, it's going to be 6.97 divided by 8.2764. And tan inverse. So when I do, it's going to be tan inverse of 6.97 over 8.2764. And I'm getting about 40.1 degrees. And that makes sense. So that's our final answer. So our final speed is going to be, or let me just highlight that in green. So we have our initial speed is going in part A, sorry, our initial speed in part A is going to be VI is equal to 16.5528 meters per second, but our velocity in part B is going to be 10.8 meters per second, 40 degrees below the horizontal, right? Because over here, we've shown that this is our horizontal and we're just 40.1 degrees below it. And so that's our final answer. If this was helpful, um, please don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you have any questions, as always, please feel free to leave them in the comments or send me an email. Um, thank you so much for watching and see you next time.